Judgment in the appeal, BP Holdings and others, and the Commissioners of Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. The question on this appeal is whether the first tier tribunal, the FTT, was entitled to make an order debarring Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, HMRC, from defending an appeal concerning liability for VAT brought by companies in the BPP group. From 1999, a single BPP company supplied both education and books to students. From 2006, this changed. One BPP company supplied books, another supplied education. BPP considered that this involved separate supplies, one of education, which is standard rated for VAT purposes, and the other of books, which is zero rated. Accordingly, BPP therefore accounted for VAT on the education, but not on the books. In November 2012, HMRC issued two assessments claiming that BPP should have accounted for VAT on the books from 2006, and they also issued a decision to that effect in December 2012. In May 2013, BPP applied to the FTT against the two assessments and the decision. HMRC served its statement of case 14 days late and also provided disclosure late. BPP then asked uh, the uh, FTT for an order that HMRC answer certain questions of fact within 14 days, failing which BPP's appeals should be allowed. In January 2014, uh, Judge Hellier um, ordered that each, if HMRC uh, did not reply to each of the questions raised by 31st January, they may be debarred from taking further part in the proceedings. On 31st January 2014, HMRC served their response. Six weeks later, uh, BPP applied for a debarring order uh, against HMRC uh, on the grounds that HMRC had not answered each of the questions uh, they raised. Meanwhile, HMRC supplied a defective disclosure statement and a list of documents which was eight days late and no application for extension of time was made till four weeks later. In June 2014, Judge Mosdale granted BPP's application for a debarring order. Subsequently, Judge Bishop in the Upper Tribunal allowed HMRC's appeal. The Court of Appeal then allowed BPP's appeal and restored the debarring order. HMRC now appealed to this court, and today the Supreme Court unanimously dismisses the appeal. As Judge Mosdale ha held, the order made by Judge Hellier reflects the terms of the relevant tribunal rules, which empower the FTT to make a debarring order against a party who fails to comply with the direction uh, such as that made by Judge Hellier. It would therefore be only appropriate for an appellate court to interfere with Judge Mosdale's full and carefully considered judgment if it could be shown that she took irrelevant material into account, she ignored relevant material, she applied wrong principles, or reached a decision which no reasonable tribunal could have reached. Case law concerning time limits and sanctions relevant to the English Civil Procedure Rules, the CPR, does not apply directly to the tribunals, whose jurisdiction extends to the whole of the United Kingdom. Scotland and Northern Ireland have different, if not entirely, not entirely distinguishable rules. However, uh, when she considered uh, the decisions of the uh, English and Welsh uh, Court of Appeal uh, on the CPR, uh, she treated them as giving guidance by analogies, analogy. Thus, when considering the reasoning in the 2014 Mitchell case, Judge Mosdale correctly considered that while the case was not directly relevant, it contained some useful guidance. She did not misunderstand the guidance given in Mitchell, uh, and developments in the subsequent case of Denton uh, do not justify upsetting her decision. Judge Mosdale carefully considered all the relevant factors, including the disadvantage to HMRC, the arguably disproportionate benefit to BPP, and the fact that HMRC was discharging a public duty uh, did not, she rightly held, justify a different approach. It was not disproportionate for BPP to have sought a debarring order rather than proceeding to a hearing. Accepting the argument that the debarring order would result in an unjustified windfall for BPP would risk undermining the utility of the sanction of a debarring order generally.
The decision to make a debarring order against HMRC was tough, and some FTT judges may not have made it. However, HMRC cannot cross the high hurdle of demonstrating that the decision was unjustifiable, given the combination of the nature and extent of HMR's failure to comply uh, with BPP's request, the length of the delay in rectifying the failure, and the length of the consequential delay to the proceedings, the absence of any remedy to compensate BPP for the delay, and the absence of any explanation or excuse for the failure, coupled with the existence of other failures by HMRC to comply with directions. The court is now adjourned.